It's the Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I'm going to look at loan plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports on this contest to operate. If you have any questions late in the NASCAR, this is a super question. Feel free to shoot them away on Twitter, Brandon Cruz DFS. Most importantly, take everything here with the grain of salt and use your best as we're making entries. Additionally, if you have a game on addiction that's just not my problem, check your sense of feelings at the door. We are looking at the Xfinity Series at Phoenix. Now, why I transfer that over, if you look at the top of the screen, you see Brandon Cruz DFS on Patreon. That's where you can find my stuff we're still around the beginning of march things are a bit more expensive it, it typically everything averages out to about a dollar fifty a race once you get farther and farther down the month you're paying a little bit more but if you want to join me see where i'm going with my projections see my my projections i actually make lineups with if you want cores if you want my heat map things of that nature go check it out on there another side note thank you guys for thank you for getting me two thousand subscribers i really appreciate that i haven't really pushed that on and off you know this season i think really the first week was really the only reason i do that because i hate annoying people with that but thank you guys for doing that let's break down the expandy series race here i have not watched pierce's video i know he put it out mm, roughly around 30 minutes ago i haven't watched it yet i like to at least get my stuff out there first before i start listening to everybody else uh speaking of pierce we got a live show 12 30 saturday 12.30 p.m. Eastern, Saturday, we're going to be breaking down the Xfinity Series race. You can come talk to us, ask us questions. We're going to see if we can argue anymore, if we can make cases for other drivers. And same thing on Sunday, 10 a.m., my YouTube channel right here, Brandon Cruz DFS, going to be doing another live show breaking down the Cup Series. And really, that's about it. Let's dive down into the Xfinity Series. Now, looking at how I'm going to make lineups, and I'll talk about this more in the Cup Series video this week, but I'm I'm just aiming for guys. Like my player pool, the guys that I'm playing are going to be guys who have shown that they can run top fives or top five lap average, not top five, people who can run in the top five. So I'm looking at the lap by lap data, which you can find at Race for the Prize. I'm looking at lap by lap data of last year at certain road courses, even at the road course this year. I'm looking at how well people were able to get through the field because the road cor road courses and short tracks go pretty much hand in hand. Usually if you're good at short tracks, you'll actually be good at road courses and vice versa here. So um, if you're too lazy to do that or you don't know how to do it, the guys that are popping off for me uh, looking at fast laps and laps led points in 2020 are Cindric, Allgaier, and A.J. Allmendinger, and then others that show up are Chastain, Jones, Haley. I'm not really interested in Chastain. Don't think he can really do much here because he's not in the race. Uh, looking at the Daytona road course, looking at guys who are either, either able to get through the field or run fast laps or just guys that I like in general looking at that race were Cindric, Ty Gibbs, Harrison Burton, Haley, um, A.J. Allmendinger, uh, Allgaier, and Jade Buffer, Buford, actually, we'll talk about him a little bit when we get down there, um, but looking right now, I normally don't talk about pricing a whole lot, but I think it's worth noting, I think we got to start this video talking about pricing here, um, Justin Allgaier and Noah Gregson at 12000 11 6 both. I think Justin Allgaier, I think it's going to be very hard for him to pay that off. I would I, I would argue the same thing for Gregson. Um, normally, I make these videos Wednesday evening. I get them out first. Didn't do that this week, so I actually have a good amount of my projections through. And I don't have Allgaier leading a whole lot of laps, okay? I, don't, I haven't projected to get a few laps led and a few fast laps. When I mean a few, I mean single and double digit, like low not even past 20 on either of these. So I don't see Allgaier being able to pay this off, really. I just, I don't see him getting over anywhere, like really over 50 DraftKings points. Um, if you're looking at track history and you're looking at uh, previous lap data for maybe a few years back when they had practice and everything, that's fine. I'm, I'm just not looking at that. I'm looking at the road courses. I'm looking at, at the short tracks data from last year. And if you take Richmond out, Allgaier, you know, he really didn't have that much speed. Um, obviously he had some fast laps and stuff with the short tracks, but I think anything's going to be blown out of proportion with Allgaier. I don't see him really paying off his salary. And in, in a situation where I like um, paying around the 9, 8, 7K ranges, I don't really think I'm going to be going to, to Justin Allgaier. That's just me. Same thing with Noah Gregson. I have Noah Gregson leading a little bit more than Justin Allgaier, but, but I both have these guys for under 55 DraftKings points. And so... Right then and there, that's showing me that I'd, I'm projecting them to not work out. I don't think they're going to be optimal. Guys that I do want to focus on are, I know I have Hemrick as a C, but Hemrick, Jones, Sindrick, Allgaier, Haley, Burton, and the other Burton, so Jeb and Harrison, these are the guys I'm looking at 
possibly leading this race. I think it's going to be very similar. And I think, um, I know Vegas is, is a bit extreme, but we saw a lot of guys lead throughout the Vegas race. I think we're going to see the same thing here. Maybe not necessarily as many people, but I would not be shocked if we see um, Hemrick lead a good portion of the race right off the start. If we see Jones take over right off the start, if we see Austin Sindrick dive to the bottom on the initial restart, pass both these guys in one and two and lead down the back straightaway and lead a good portion of the race. Same thing with AJ Allmendinger. He'll be stuck in the outside second row, but he's ran fast laps. He's, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the Collie cars have been extremely well at the short tracks last year. I expect him to be good here again. And, and Allgaier is great on the road courses. So this whole group right here, you know, really the first seven guys, if you're making a lot of lineups, I'm going to be making a lot of lineups through here. My Probably my favorite in this in this area that I'm highlighting here would be Austin Sindrick and probably Harrison Burton second, um, probably Allgaier third, but that's probably the situation I'm going to go with. That's the area that I'm going to go with. Um yeah, I think that's about it. I don't really want to waste your time too much because uh, I know you guys are busy and everything. Uh, Josh Berry start ninth. I think he'll be quite chalky. He'll be a chalky play, but for good reason. Like, short track racing is where Josh Berry sh excels at, and he's been doing well this year with no practice. Finally in a good car. 7,600 is just too cheap. Jeb Burton is too cheap at 7,700. That's why I have him in there. If you want to label him as a dominator, Go right ahead. I wouldn't fault you for anything. Michael Annette at 7,900. I mean, look, you can make lineups that don't even touch guys starting outside the top 20. And I, I think that's really the way to go. Uh, I'm not focusing on place differential at all. I'm just focusing on guys who can get a top 5, top 10, top 15, things of that nature. As we go down the starting grid, I like Brandon Brown a whole lot. Brandon Brown, $7,100, still too cheap. If anything, Brandon Brown's going to be racing inside the top 10. We're going to see Brandon Brown getting stage points. I know that doesn't matter for DFS point of view. Um, but we're going to see Brandon Brown running around 6th, 7th, 8th this entire race. I, I have him finishing anywhere from 6th to 4th right now. Um, Allgaier, like I said, I, I don't think he leads laps. I think he finishes around 8th to 5th, but I don't see him leading laps. I'm not interested in Jeremy Clements. not interested in Santino Ferrucci. Ferrucci? Ferrucci. Not interested. Tommy J. Martin's not interested. Joe Graff Jr. I don't think I'm going to go there. My lineup so far is... Are they liking Joe Graff Jr. with everybody in the player pool? Where are you at, Joe Graff Jr.? Hello, Joe Graff Jr. Where are you at? No, not at all. Optimizer is saying we don't need to go to Joe Graff Jr. That's with my projections. That with That's with my lineups. So because of that, I'm not going to use Joe Graff Jr. Josh Williams, Landon Castle. Williams is interesting. He's $6,000. And in a race where I really don't want to be goofing around with the 5K guys, Josh Williams at $6,000 starting 17th, I th he should finish around there. I would not be shocked if he's racing inside the top five, or not top five, top 15. We've seen the DGM guys, Alex LeBay, Josh Williams last year be very well, be, do very well at these short tracks. This is a situation where I think he's underpriced, and if you want to make very balanced lineups, um, or lineups that aren't necessarily going to the bottom of the barrel, Matt Mills, things of that nature. I like Josh Williams. Landon Castle, same thing. 5200 for Landon Castle starting 18th. Really? I mean, that's a misprice there. He's a top 15 car as well. Matt Snyder, um, or Myatt Snyder, 8200 Richard Childress. I would much ra I I want to try and get off. I don't know if he's going to be owned or not. His pricing isn't crazy. I feel like, and I guess I have to break this up in, in two different things here. Because we're seeing a lot of people pay up for place difference. We're seeing a lot of people play safe plays right now. I mean, we're all guessing. Everybody who makes content, everybody who makes articles, we're we're all guessing. Whether it's a truck, Xfinity, Cup Series, we're all guesstimating on how these guys are going to do. I foresee people like Myatt Snyder, people like Justin Allgaier, people like, who else is in the back? Not Ty Gibbs. We'll talk about Ty Gibbs in a second. But people like Ryan Sieg, people like Riley Herbst. There's going to be a lot of ownership on these guys because they're safe. People see the place differential and they're like, okay, boom, bam, that, satisf that satisfies that in the lineup. I have the safe place differential. But you got to remember that there's still fast laps out there. We still need guys who are going to lead fast laps. And in a race that I think we're going to see multiple leaders, not necessarily just one guy walking away with these races because we don't have practice. So some of the teams are going to be changing their setups. We saw last year. Um, even in both races, we saw guys kind of flip-flop and change, um, 
change where they were running uh, in both of the races. So Maya Snyder, 8,200, I think he's going to carry some ownership, and I don't necessarily like that. He's probably the only guy in that range that has place differential that I wouldn't worry about playing. But even with that, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be too high on him. Brett Moffitt, just not going to play him. I don't believe in the car. I don't believe in him starting there. Um, another, another situation. I mean, some people might argue Brett Moffitt, 8,400 is a good play, uh, can work out. And look, this car, you know, is a top 15 car. Brett Moffitt can get it into the top 10 at, at intermediate tracks. Now we're at a short track to where the disadvantages for, you know, these smaller teams really shows it. He's going to be battling at the top 15 level, you know, 14th, 15th, 16th, 13th, 17th, around there in the entire race. I'm not interested in that. Jeffrey Earnhardt, not interested. Um, $6,500, I'd much rather go to Landon Castle. I'd much rather go to Josh Williams. I just don't see a need to use Jeffrey Earnhardt. Dexter Bean, why am I looking over there? Dexter Bean, no. Um, or Dex, I mean, so this is where... Entering the week, seeing him at $4,500, I was like, okay, I might need to go there in the optimizer. But the optimizer, my lineups are just not telling me that I need to punt, that I need to go this low. I don't see one guy in you know the low four range, the low five range that's just popping off. My my optimizer, my lineups are, are all building around you know balanced lineups or at least staying above the, bring it up. Um, you know, it, it, it's staying around the, uh, heck it's actually making lineups, you know, in the 6k range. It's like, I'm not having to dive down to the 5k range. I'm not having to dive down to the 4k range. And, you know, I just, I just don't see it. We can go out of our way to get people, um, I will talk that we'll keep talking about, but either, either way, like I don't, I don't see Dexter being really fit in a whole lot of lineups. I don't think you have to go there. Uh, Jesse little, same thing there. I don't think you have to go there. Kobe Howard too expensive. Not going to do it. Uh, Ryan Vargas, not going to do it. He's starting where he should finish. Kyle Weatherman. I just don't trust the car. I'm not going to waste my time with that. Ty Gibbs starting 27th, $8,900. I like him, but this is a situation where I think this is a place differential play. Sure. Maybe you project, Ty Gibbs to lead laps. But looking at how he won his race at, at the road course, a lot of guys wrecked out. A lot of guys are racing stupid. A lot of guys are making mistakes. And he drove through the field. He he, he held off Austin Sindrick. But in a race where there's, I mean, let, let's let's really talk about who Ty Gibbs has to pass. Who, who he's going to be racing with. Henrik Jones, Sindrick, all, all Geyer, Haley, Jeb Burton, Harrison Burton, Michael Annette, Josh Berry, Gregson, Allgaier Brown. So he's going to be fighting all these guys in the top 10 here. So where does that kind of level out Ty Gibbs? I'd say maybe around a fourth place, fifth place, sixth place, seventh place. I wouldn't be crazy. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Ty Gibbs finish seventh tomorrow or finish, not tomorrow, but on Saturday. If he finishes fifth, if he finishes fourth, if he finishes eighth, like that's where I think he's going to finish. So I don't have him projected to lead laps, but I do have him as a place differential play. This is about the only place differential play that I would actually consider. But when you're paying up for him at $8,900, there's a good argument to be made that you can just pay down a little bit for Josh Berry. You could just pay a little bit for Jeb Burton, a guy who I think could low-key lead some laps here. Uh, pay, you know, get lower ownership by going Myatt Snyder. Get lower ownership by going Josh Williams, who's almost too thousand dollars cheaper than ty gibbs so i like ty gibbs as a play but i don't project him to win the race i'll tell you exactly how many laps i have him project to lead laps um right now i currently have him project to lead 15 laps 25 fast laps i think that's where ty gibbs fits in because we're going to have such a dogfight for the top of the the scoring pylon we're gonna have a lot of guys fighting for the win so there's that let's talk about blaine perkins over here i can already see things just going downhill i can already see it so let's talk about blaine and i already saw things on twitter where it was like oh last time we had an arca guy in here you know at this price he won the race okay let's back it up that's ty gibbs let's let's look at blaine perkins what are you gonna do look at his arca stats okay here we go let's 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 look at his arca stats we won't even look at phoenix from last year so let's see, Toli, Toli, whatever track this is, I think it's a short track. He won this race. How many cars were in that race? 14. When he won his race at Evergreen, how many cars were in that race? 11. When he won his race at Douglas last year, how many cars were in that race? Oh, that's right, 11 
11 cars. Come on now. When he finished second, how many cars was in were in that race? Oh, 11 cars? I mean, dude, get get out of here. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So let's talk about when he ran Phoenix last year in the Arca Menard series, Arca Wet, whatever it was. When he ran last year, he was running around 16th most of the race, running around 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. He kind of even out to 16th, and he blew a motor. Okay, so if you have expectations for Blaine to hop in there and do exactly what Ty Gibbs did at the road course, you're crazy. Like, that, that's insane. There's no, there's no way. This car isn't that good, this team isn't that good, and this kid isn't that good. Now, with that said, I think Blaine, you know, passes people. He's not stupid. He's not... Oh, he, he has racecraft. He's nobody, he, he's, he knows what he's doing, okay? And he's in an R motor. What is he in? The 03 car, I believe. Just went blank on the car that he's in. Give me a second here. 23, where are you at? But yeah, he's in the 23s in the R Motorsports car. I mean, at that price, it's a value. Where do I see him finishing? Anywhere 23rd to 18th. If he finishes any worse, I won't be shocked. Um, but he's he's not going to be in the top five. So, you know, back it down. Understand where this is coming from. Now, at the same point, where is he in terms of his salary? Well, let's see. He's almost at the bottom of the barrel in terms of salary. Who are the people around him? You got Weatherman, Bean, and Joe Graff Jr. By far and large, Perkins is probably the best play of that price range so if you're down there and you're forced to go which i think we're going to have some optimizers kind of force people down there which looking at mine with everybody in there we're seeing perkins actually not get in as many lives as i thought um maybe because i have other guys projected higher uh perkins is by far and large the play that the optimizers want to go to if i'm in that range but look don't do not go in there with the expectation that this dude is going to win the race okay you got to really back down your expectations there um but for the price you know he, he's a great play down there and he's about the only guy worth going down there um if i had to choose between perkins and matt mills I'm choosing perkins matt mills and pars or parsons and perkins uh, probably parsons um or not parsons probably perkins um perkins graph yet again you know going to perkins so that's where we're at there bailey curry getting better i mean this car is doing good if they can and they actually would have ran very well last week they just might snyder ran into the back of them entering pit road so they had to actually go to the garage and they got a tons of they got a lot of wave rounds and lucky dogs that kind of saved their day but keep an eye on bailey curry maybe not right now he's starting 29th but when he's starting a little bit farther back when he's starting in the 30th again in the 30s again um around this price range i, I really like him not sure i'm going to get to them in this race here riley herbst yet again paying for a premium four place difference i'm not going to pay ten thousand dollars for this man um, when I see him finishing 11th, when I see him finishing 12th, now he's had some bad luck this year. It hasn't been his fault, but I just don't see it. Ryan Sieg though, far, far, far too cheap. I see Ryan Sieg being a very popular play, uh, in cash, GPPs, whatever you want to do, whatever you play. I see a lot of things go into Ryan Sieg and I see a lot of people writing up Ryan Sieg because he's safe. You know, he's safe. Do I think he gets outscored by people? Yeah, I do. Do I think he's a top 10 play? I don't know. Let's go check it out. Let's see what I haven't projected at. I like going through this, you know, late in the week so I can tell you where they are looking at. So give me a second here. Where is Sieg in terms of my, in terms of my, in terms of my rankings? Did that backwards. Where is Sieg at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, Right now, my projections have Ryan Sieg, the 13th highest scoring driver in terms of DraftKings points. Awesome for cash, not going to win any tournament um, unless he goes out there and just does well. And that's what are we projecting little old Sieg at in these projections here? Give him 14th with a few, a um, couple fast laps here and there, a couple hog points, whatever you want to look at it. It's going to be around. Um, you know, 13th best driver, 13th in, in total DK points. So, you know, that's why I have him rated as a C. You know, that's what my projections were saying. I don't think that you need to really go that way. He looks appealing, um, or I have him as an A. He looks appealing. He's he's cheap. He's safe. A lot of people are going to go there, but I, I think he's going to be outscored. Jade Buford, if you want to look at him at the road course, um, he was running 16th, 15th, 18th. I forgot where he was running when he ran mechanical issues. Let me bring that up again. 
I just blank. I keep Xing out of everything. I apologize. I'm acting like I have no idea what I'm even doing here. Let's look. Let's find good old Jade Buford. Jade Buford. I don't even know how you pronounce his last name. Every announcer, everybody that I know, content creator, announcer, everybody announces everybody's names differently. Like, we can't even pronounce Stephen Light's name correctly. We can't even pronounce other people's correctly. So let's see. Uh, Daytona Road Course. Good old Jade starts 28th. He goes up to 18th on lap one, 16th lap two. So he's running around 16th. First caution comes out. Restart 17th, falls back to 19th. We go under yellow again. We go green again for two laps. He's in 25th. We have another yellow. He comes out of that yellow in 10th. So they go around 11 laps green. He goes from 10th to 12th. So he held his position at the road course. Under yellow, um, he pits. He comes out 15th, and he has a, uh, equipment failure uh, when he was running 15th. So if you want to th kind of throw a dart or throw a, throw your chance at good old Jade Buford here, in this situation, 6200 a bit steep, but this might be a surprise race that we see him do something in. And seeing how I have him, you know, 20th to 12th anywhere, really run around there. If that equipment stays good for him, I think this could be actually a, a, a decent race for good old Jade. JJ Ailey, back again in the Rick Weary car, starting 33rd. Whenever it starts here, you know, this is top 15 car. I'd much rather go to JJ for 67 over Ryan Sieg for 86. Ryan Sieg has a higher chance of winning this race. So it's just, you know, offsetting, um, you know, upside for each of these guys. But that's why I have them ranked A, B, and all that type of stuff. Greg Alding, not going to do it. Stefan Parsons, if this equipment, if he can stop spinning out, this equipment can get him to 24th, 22nd. But we're seeing a lot of people still play him. We're seeing a lot of ownership still on him. I'm going to be playing a lot of the guys in this range. I mean, look, Stephen Parsons is $5,400. If I can get up to... You know the 6k range in my lineup so i don't have to go down there i'm not going to do that if i'm in the 5k range it's most likely going to be stephen parsons um just because i like this car i think he, he should run extremely well at the short tracks we, we've seen him have great runs at the short tracks in this car we just need him to actually you know keep racing the forward direction and not spin out or anything alex lebay absolutely too too cheap absolutely too cheap 7200 dollars. excuse me this is a, yet again a top 15 car um Instead of trying to pay up for Riley Herbst, instead of, instead of trying to pay up for Ryan Sieg, if you want place differential, J.J. Ailey and Alex LeBay, you know, that's where you, you got to go. Don't know if a lot of people are going to do that. Don't know if projections are going to show that. But for me, that's where I'll go. If I'm looking for place differential, I'm not going to pay $10,000 for it. I'm not going to pay $9,000 for it. I'm going to pay $7,200 for Alex LeBay with his place differential. I'll do that. David Starr, you know, he lived but didn't score well at Las Vegas. We still don't know the story. It all comes down to the Carl Long situation. Tune into the live show or do it yourself. Go check Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever the heck Carl's posting on, his team's posting on. But we don't know. We need to see what type of car these guys are running. And until then, I don't know if they're sponsored or not. That's just how it is. Matt Mills, not going to do it. Uh, Timmy Hill, not going to do it yet again. I don't know if they're sponsored or not. Now, let's talk about Loris real quick. And not necessarily for the Carl Long crew, but this is where we really got to dive down into the whole, um, you know, we're going layers down. The Xfinity series is an onion, and we're just cutting through the layers here. So, Rain Brothers Racing had the owner points for the 23 car. They were locked into all these races. Um, our motorsports runner wanted to run a second car. Obviously, qualifying was rained out at Daytona. They couldn't get any ownership points, so our motorsports wasn't able to get any cars in, so they went ahead and bought the points from the 23 car, from the Ram Brothers Racing, and they're using the 23 as the secondary R motorsports car. Now, the Ram Brothers are still wanting to race. Now that they sold off their number to our motorsports, they still have races planned with Nally Decker for example. Nally Decker is going to run five races this year for this team. She's already ran one at Daytona. She's going to run Talladega. She's going to run Nashville, Road America, and Martinsville in this race. Lawrence is supposed to run two or three races this year. So what is the situation here? Well, Rain Brothers went to Carl Long and said, okay, we don't have our points anymore. Can we borrow your points for the 13 car? Carl Long is, okay, I don't have any money. 
I, I need money here. Go ahead and take the 13 cars points. So you're going to see that the owner for the 13 is Carl Long this week. This is not the Carl Long car. This is Raymond Brothers car racing with the 13 on the side for the ownership points. Now, with that also said, this is not a Carl Long machine. This is the RSS car, the 23 that Nally Decker raced at the Daytona Road Course, the 23 that Chris Wright raced at Daytona. So it's under the 13, but it's still that type of car. It's still that same stable that they ran there. So why, why am I going to all this? I'm probably going to be on Loris a lot. I like him. I think this is the 23 car that, are, like I said, that RSS run ran at the in the Daytona race, the Daytona Road Course race. And it's not the R Motorsports 23 because I've already had questions related to that. Is this the R Motorsports? No, it's not the R Motorsports 23. Um, the reason why is this important? Because if this is the same car that Nally Decker is going to race at Martinsville, Road America, Nashville, Talladega, um, this is their chance to work on their short track program. If Lawrence, if Lawrence wants to run more, I think he has two or three races right now. I just forgot what it was going or what he was saying. Um, they're going to work in his track. He, he, he comes from the NASCAR European Tour, or Euro Tour, whatever it's called. Road course racing, short track racing, very similar. I like Loris here. And at his price, 5700 I like him. So if I'm in the 4K price range, I don't mind Park, Perkins. If I'm in the 5K range, I don't mind Loris. If I'm in the 6K range, I don't mind trying to get up to people like Alex LeBay, things of that nature. So I don't think we need to go bottom of the barrel this week. I don't think we need to go top of the salaries this week. You know, a little bit in the middle. You know, I think that I think those are the types of lineups that are going to work. And, sorry, I just hit that again. And I'm going to be trying to fit in as many of these guys into lineups as possible. My projected lap leaders are all in this group here. I'm going to be trying to... Um, add as many of those guys in the lineups as possible so thank you for listening thank you for checking me out remember live show 12 30 eastern time saturday and 10 a.m eastern time sunday we'll catch you next time thank you for tuning in check out the cup series video up on my channel as well